I think authenticity really matters to me because like, I, I don't know, I'm just very self-absorbed. Like, I always look into myself and wonder like, who am I truly? I always want people to like, you know, see me the same way. I feel like maybe that's probably a reason why I decided to do music and why I decided to do this kind of music, you know? Lin Ying is a local singer-songwriter who recently got mainstream attention with the National Day song this year, The Road Ahead. Beyond that, her indie pop brand of music has also brought her to the international stage, working with foreign artists and performing at festivals overseas. However, she doesn't just want to be known for these things. As someone who values authenticity, what does it mean for her to be an artist who strives to be big while still retaining an audience who truly understands her music? I only get really inspired to write when I'm going through something that like emotionally compels me to do so, right? And normally the strongest emotions you feel are the most negative ones, like, because oh no. Yeah, because when you're happy, you're just too busy enjoying the happiness, you know? Yeah. So you wouldn't want to waste it like, you know, analyzing it too much. I think that's why most music that you hear is always sad songs. Yeah, it's always sad like songs. sadness or even 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 if it's not truly sad, it's like wanting to be distracted or it's like frustration or you know? You rarely ever hear happy songs. I think, would you say most of your music are sad, like the lyrics? Yeah, I think so. It comes from some kind of like negative place, like for me to process. It's kind of a coping mechanism for me. La. I remember like being 11, um, and that was the first time I realised that one day my parents were going to die. Oh. Yeah. And I don't know why, like, I was just sitting, I remember I was at some kind of beach. There was some kind of sand involved and and it hit me then at, at maybe like 5 p.m. like the you know the shitty setting yeah. sun feeling yeah. when you feel like the day is gonna be over yeah. and then like yeah I remember I remember being at that age and then realizing that oh my gosh like everything I love is going to go away yeah. which is quite I mean that's the stuff that makes me think that okay like I like that must be natural to me that must have come to me just out of my control. vocal booth, it's all a, like the best take isn't the one that is the most perfect in terms of pitch. The best take is the one where I'm feeling it most intensely and most fully and I'm able to convey that. So it's all about like what's in your head at the time when you're the least distracted, you're the most focused, you're the most in that state of mind. That's always the best take. So much. Okay, maybe we go to the maybe see the skewers. Oh, they want mantle. Yeah, okay, I don't want a mantle. I'm down for a mantle. Sorry, this is so hot, huh? Ah, it looks so good. Oh yeah, you're telling me about your new single faith here. I think Faith was the first song that made me realise that oh, it's actually possible for me to work with people and still write something that's quite honest and authentic to what I'm feeling. Like there's some kind of magic in a room that happens, you know, that we all kind of enter the same kind of vibe and feel drawn to the same type of like subject matter. I started singing basically when American Idol started airing in Singapore. It was like late in primary school that I would just imagine myself at an American Idol audition and I would just sing these songs. Then I don't know, in my first year of secondary school, I was in a new school and everything, I had like no friends. I like, I, for some reason I was just so brave, I joined the singing competition. As like a sec one kid, you know? It's like, it's like social suicide, right? You go and like be extra. Yeah. yeah! And then I actually won it and I was like, oh, maybe I can sing. By the time I actually considered singing, or really like enjoyed it, I think by then, YouTube had become quiet a popular thing. I would film myself singing covers of songs. I'll be wearing my FPTs and have my 10-year series on the table. My mom would scold me for like being for looking so unpresentable. But um, but yeah I did that for a good few years and I think that's what like kind of prepared me in the sense for what I'm doing today. Like with everything in my life something unintentional happens and then it just snowballs into something else and like Eventually, uh, this German producer called Felix Yen got in touch with me and, and we wrote two songs together and suddenly he blew up and then he brought me on tour with him to Germany and, 
Yeah, it's pretty amazing. I think that's like my philosophy with life that I, you know, I'm trying to constantly practice. Whatever opportunity comes, just take it on, you know. Have an eventful life, you never know what's gonna happen. And then what about um, the road ahead? Like, did you, like, because you know, Singaporeans uh, have a history of being very critical of NDP songs. Like, the past few songs were like, Right. I'm also very critical oh, of really? NDP songs. The kind of NDP songs that that don't resonate with people are the ones that are the ones where it's just evident that they're writing in these huge like platitudes and generalities that you know they're just trying to like fit the brief, you know? You can always tell when something is just they just use a lot of like overused phrases and or you, or if you paint a picture that's unrealistically positive. No one wants to see that kind of ignorance at all, that kind of like, you know, blatant um, lack of acknowledgement to the actual issues that we're facing. Right? My goal with this was always to, to reach as many people as possible and, you know, I get to throw in my little lines in there that matter to me, like, see this island, every grain of sand, you know? Then how, how did it feel when, like, the song got viral on TikTok? and like people started making dances about it. I had mixed feelings at first. I was very scared. I was like, oh my gosh, is everyone gonna make a meme of this song? I think all things considered. It's a pretty positive meme lah. You know, nobody really criticised it. Do you get affected by like criticism? Yeah. If people give me very low level criticism, I'm totally fine with it. Like, when they criticise me on very surface level things, like how I look. Or... Okay. Yeah, I'm okay with that, because I feel like I don't tie my identity so much to, to such things. But if it's a very well thought out comment that really criticizes like, you know, I don't know, the way I write or or, or like calls me like dishonest or pretentious, I would be very affected because I feel like oh, it's me, you know. I remember someone left this comment on one of my songs and, and he said he said, does she even know the meanings of the words that she's using? <laughs> like, they, they just sound like they, they're like bombastic words for no reason at all that serve no purpose. And oh my gosh, I felt so attacked yeah. by that. I can't believe I still remember it, but yeah, that's the kind of comment that gets to me. Like. Yeah, I think that's them too. Because there's only one on the... Oh, that must be it. Okay, I will go for it. But how hard is it to become like a full-time singer-songwriter that is enough to pay the bills. Mm, I think I got lucky with my EDM break because I don't rely on like live performances as my source of income. I still get royalties and you know it's very freeing to be able to make music and then to, for that to still be able to sustain you. Bon Iver, I was a big Bon Iver fan girl mm. when I started making music. Mm. Yeah, always wanted to be just like him. Um, I also find the idea that, you know, he can be such a successful artist who's won Grammys, but he'll probably walk on the street and no one will recognize him because he like, wears a trucker hat or whatever, you mm. know? Like, that, that kind of success in music is very attractive to me. It makes me feel like people really like you for your music and mm. they don't have to like stick their nose into your personal life and you can still be successful. So I'm guessing your parents were supportive of you from the start of your musical career, right? Yeah. But not supportive in the way you see parents on American Idol being supportive, you know what I mean? Mm. Oh, yeah. oh honey, you're gonna be good at everything you do, <laughs> yeah. My dad runs his own business, so he always told me that what you do has always should always be tied to tied to you and not to some bigger organization like the value that you bring lah. So I think that was very helpful. Um, like it helped me see music with a more like 
I guess, like realistic point of view and to not just treat it as a pipe dream and to really think of it as like some like a business that I had to create. Like. I feel like I want to give so much more than my voice, you know. I just sit on a bus and cry to yourself. <laughs> yeah, those are my favourite messages, you know, like when people message me and tell me that like, oh, I helped them through a really difficult time or they were going through a rough patch or that they, they share like some memory with me that they shared with a friend and they were listening to my song through, through it all. Like those are the things that really matter to me and like, yeah, it's like my song is part of your life, you know, like, and I just think about all the songs that have been part of my life and I think of what a difference that has made mm -hmm. and how whenever I listen to a certain song, it reminds me of a certain moment or a mood and like, I would, it's such a privilege to be able to do that and to be that in someone else's life. I was always quite certain that I didn't want to study music. I didn't want to corrupt music with, um, with knowledge. Music to me was something that was so personal and like so unique to my own process that I didn't want to know too much. I didn't want to learn too much theory or to know what the right thing to do was. In some ways, I feel like I was so sure of myself so young and maybe I, I like that now. I don't know.